PET CT is a type of medical imaging that provides detailed pictures that allow doctors to see how the body is working inside. It can be used in cancer to see how active a tumour is. In this film, we will see what a PET CT scan is and how it may be used in cancer clinical trials. It shows an actor, Martin, going through the journey of having a PET CT scan and we hear from a cancer patient about his experience of PET CT. This information applies to adults only, as there are important differences when PET CT is used in children. PET CT scans are used to take detailed pictures that show how cells in the body are working. The images are taken on a scanner like this. Firstly, the scanner takes a CT scan. CT stands for computerized tomography. This uses a low dose of x-rays to show where structures are located in the body. The CT scan takes about 30 seconds. This is followed by the PET scan, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes. PET stands for Positron Emission Tomography. The PET scan shows extra information about how active cells are and whether they may be cancerous, as seen in this example of a lung tumour. In order for the PET scan to work, the patient is given an injection of a substance called a radio tracer about an hour before the scan. There are various types of radio tracers that can tell us different things about cancer, but the one most commonly used is called FDG. FDG is a sugar that has been modified to contain a small amount of radiation. Because cancer cells are very active, they take in more sugar than surrounding normal tissue. This means that when a patient is given an injection of FDG, it builds up in tumours and the radiation shows up on the PET scan. The PET scan is then combined with the CT scan on the computer to allow doctors to see not only where the cancer is, but also how active it is. PET CT is playing a major role in improving the care of our cancer patients. By participating in PET CT research, you are contributing directly to this. It will lead us closer to our goal of having personalised care for all our cancer patients. There are three main ways that PET CT may be used in cancer research. It can be used to find out which patients are suitable to enter a particular trial. For example, for a lung cancer trial, a PET CT scan could be given to patients before they enter a study to get detailed information on the extent of their cancer. This information helps to make sure that the trial is an appropriate choice for a particular patient. It also means researchers know that they have a similar group of patients being studied, so they can be confident in the trial results. PET-CT can also be used in clinical trials to find out whether a treatment is working. PET scans can show changes in the tumour earlier than other types of scan, sometimes as soon as two weeks after starting treatment. This means patients who are responding to a particular treatment can continue treatment. Patients who are not responding to treatment can be identified quickly and may need to change to another treatment option. Some trials look at new ways of using PET-CT to assess cancer. PET-CT scans already give us a lot of information but researchers are always looking for ways to advance the way they're used. For example, a study might focus on assessing a new PET technique 
finding out the best timing after treatment to give a scan, or comparing the information you get from PET scans against other types of scans. For a patient considering taking part in a clinical trial, the first discussion is usually with a research nurse. This is a good chance to find out more about what the trial will involve and any scans that will be needed. I'm a research nurse, so my main role is to make sure that patients understand um, what is involved when they're um, considering participating in a clinical trial. So I sit down with them and I spend quite a lot of time making sure they understand, first of all, why they've been um, given the opportunity, what it is about their situation that makes them suitable or eligible for the trial, um, and then um, that they understand the aims and objectives of the particular study protocol, um, if there's treatment involved, um, how the treatment is administered, uh, potential side effects of the treatment um, they could um, encounter, and um, practical things like how many additional clinic visits there are or investigations, um, where there are investigations, what that actually involves. Um, so they are sort of making the decision based on all the information, um, so it's a, it's a proper informed consent process. The level of risk of an FDG PET CT scan is small, but it must be remembered of course that it does involve exposure to a small dose of radiation. So there's a theoretical risk about 1 in 2,000 of developing a cancer over the next few decades as a consequence of the FDG PET-CT. However, this has to be balanced against a 1 in 3 risk of all of us developing a cancer sometime in our lifetimes. Patient information sheets provide us with detailed information about the risks associated with a specific trial. The Local Ethics Committee and radiation experts approve all clinical trials and included are PET-CT scans to ensure that they are appropriate for the clinical trial. Martin has decided to take part in the cancer clinical trial and today is his first PET-CT scan. Martin arrives in good time for his appointment as the timing of PET-CT scans has to be carefully planned. As advised, he has brought comfy clothes which have no metal zips and is not wearing jewellery. Martin has had nothing to eat for six hours before the appointment and just plain tap water to drink. This is important to keep the sugar levels in the blood as low as possible so that the FDG radio tracer works properly. If a patient has diabetes, it is important to know this before the scan. He will be looked after during his scan by a radiographer. I'm a radiographer and it's my job to perform PET-CT scans and other imaging procedures. Uh, radiographers are in actual fact healthcare professionals but we've had specialist education training to help use the imaging equipment safely and it's also our job to look after patients in this particular environment. Before a patient has their scan, we just get some general information from them. Uh, very importantly, I need to know whether or not they've had chemo or radiotherapy recently, have they had any biopsies, in their past have they had any surgery, and if they've had any imaging procedures done recently, such as a CT or MRI scan. We need to make sure we've got an accurate weight uh, specifically for that day. It's important we know that so we can uh, measure out the exact amount of the FDG radio tracer and uh, afterwards it helps the doctors uh, analyse the scans properly. The radiographer makes preparations for the scan, following the specific instructions given in the clinical trial protocol. In the injecting room, Martin receives an injection of the FDG radio tracer in preparation for the PET-CT scan. 
he will stay here for the next hour so that the radio tracer has time to circulate around the body and build up in any cancer cells. The radiographer will try not to spend too much time with Martin from this point onwards. This is because she works with radiation every day and needs to limit her exposure. There will also be a separate toilet for the scan patients to use after they have had the radio tracer injection, because some radiation is passed out in the urine. While Martin waits for the tracer to circulate, the radiographer will keep an eye on him using CCTV in case he needs anything. An hour later, the scan can begin. The radiographer asks him to position himself in a particular way on the bed. A strap is placed loosely around his waist. During his scan, Martin will need to lie very still, so that good pictures are obtained, so it is important to get comfortable at the start. The radiographer leaves the room and starts the scan from the room next door, where she can watch Martin at all times. For the next 20 to 30 minutes, the bed will move in small steps through the scanner. Whirring sounds may be heard during the procedure, which is perfectly normal. The information that is collected is sent to a computer for analysis by the clinical trial team. The final PET-CT scan is checked before the patient leaves the centre. After the scan, the amount of radioactivity in the body decreases rapidly. By the time a patient leaves the PET centre, there is very little radioactivity left in the body. As a general precaution, patients are asked to avoid pregnant ladies and very young children, and to try to keep their distance from people as much as possible for a few hours. After about eight hours, the radioactivity will have disappeared. Following the scan, the results are analysed by a radiologist or a nuclear medicine physician. The scan results are sent to the clinical trial team and the doctor and patient can then discuss the results. I've been a cancer patient for 13 years now, so I've had a lot of medical treatment in that time and as part of it I've had several T CT scans and two PET scans. The two PET scans were over 10 years apart. The first one was part of a clinical trial in PET scans and the second one was very much part of my own treatment. Uh, wear, wear loose clothing and warm clothing and find out actually if they will let you play music in the background whether, whether it's their music or yours, CD or the radio. Some of my friends, fellow patients, have said they find the process quite boring because you, you're alone for an hour after you have the injection and then you go under the scanner. I found the word alone was actually the problem. I had a lot of thinking time. As a cancer patient, you spend a lot of time by yourself thinking, and I struggled with that sometimes, so the background music, especially music that I chose, was much more of a help than I think you can, you can imagine and, and until it happens. For me, the most positive part of the experience, looking back, was that it is such a simple scan. It's, it's hassle-free compared to almost anything else you have. It's certainly a lot less problematic than having some form of treatment, whether that's surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, whatever. The, the scan is much easier, pain-free, except for the initial injection, and lying around if you're in some discomfort anyway, but you learn to cope with that. I think too, the, the part that I found very positive was when I had the results coming back, I asked to see the images and I saw the pictures of what was going on in my own body and I found that was a huge boost to my own confidence, it meant I could understand what the doctors were telling me about the progress of the illness or the progress of the treatment. And it meant I knew a little bit more about what they were talking about when I sat down with them 
to talk about what we were going to do in terms of my own treatment. And that's why I'd recommend having the scan to any patient, whether it's part of treatment or part of a clinical trial. It's the ability to learn more about your own situation, to take control of your own destiny, and to help your doctors make the decisions about you. This completes our journey through having a PET CT scan as part of a clinical trial. Remember that every trial is different. So if you are a patient considering taking part in a trial, your doctor or nurse will give you information that fits your particular situation.